Hello everyone. So welcome to our second series of APU and Industrial Career Life webinar session. So my name is Long here from Asia Pacific University and I'm a host for today for this session. So today is our second day, our fourth session. All right. So for those who actually have missed out our previous session, feel free to watch the replay at our Facebook page and YouTube channel. All right. While we're actually waiting for more people to join us today, let me shout out a little bit on our upcoming APU. We actually go have a live webinar until tomorrow, which we'll be covering in many interesting topics such as cybersecurity, how to choose your right pathway after SPM, AI, and, and many more. All right. So I also would like to invite you to come to join our APU e Open Day. All right. Our e counselor are ready to guide you through all the pathway available for your further study. So for more information and updates, please feel free to visit our website at www.apu.edu.my and follow our Facebook page. So today the entire world is changing now, right? Technology has been getting involved in our daily life and many things have been taken over by technology. Well, accountant role actually have a very big impact on it as well. So, but no worry, today we're actually proud to have um, Mr. Mohammad Razin and also Ms. Mira over here Reverse to tell you more on accounting, automation, and analytics. Hello, hi, welcome, Mr. Razin and Ms. Mira. Hi. All right, hi, so hi, over hi, to you, Mira. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for that introduction. Hi, everyone. A very, very good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone joining us today of this webinar. A very, very exciting one hour we have ahead of us. All right, um, I'd like to introduce myself first. Uh, I'm Miss Mira uh, from the School of Accounting and Finance, Asia Pacific University. And I'm very, very happy to introduce our guest uh, for today, Mr. Muhammad Razin Shah. And I'm just going to take a few moments, Razin, to introduce you. All right, and um, Razin has a very, very diverse uh, experience profile. He's a scholar of uh, Saim Darby. And he started his career as a finance executive with the Moto Division of Saim Dhabi. 
he rotated uh, he was rotated to various companies within the motor division and as part of its career development program at Saim Dhabi to expose new executives to the business as an internal auditor of Saim Dhabi Group Corporate Assurance he was tasked to assist in the finance department of Saim Dhabi all right uh, particularly in its finance uh, areas which includes establishing an accounting system framework and governance in 2012 razin joined the securities commission malaysia as an investigating officer for the enforcement division his tasks included uh, investigating offences under the capital market services act and the anti money laundering and anti terrorism financing act Following that in 2015 Razin joined Bumi Subsi a startup oil and gas company that specializes in underwater construction uh, within 6 months he was involved in the setting up of three operating entities in Malaysia Indonesia and Singapore respectively in 2017 Razin was appointed as Ma- the Malaysia finance director of the Bourbon companies group of companies in Malaysia Razin is currently the associate director of of finance for Equity National Berhad Equinas a private equity fund management company established by the government of Malaysia he manages the financial operations of Equinas and involved in the strategic implementation of Equinas initiatives Razin is also a fellow member of ACCA and also sitting on the member of the MI uh, Malaysian Institute of Accountants MIA and he has also served on the Malaysian Young Members Network of ACCA and he's very very passionate uh, on building okay the new generation of accountants and the accountants of tomorrow welcome razin thank you mira thank you for such a extraordinary <laughs> introduction thanks thank, thank you razin yeah, yeah listen would you like listening. to say, yeah would you like to say a few of uh, what yeah go ahead razin Ah uh, yeah thank you very much for the opportunity uh, very um, I'm very glad and very happy that uh, Mira approached me to speak uh, on the webinar today uh, it, it is quite one of those things that nowadays we are quite normal to do right no, webinars um, exactly. yeah compared to I, I think uh, two years ago normally we would do this in conferences or seminars or at, at at a at the campus or some other places so nowadays it's all about sitting at home uh and listening to each other every day so very interesting uh, i when she approached me about the topic is something that uh i told i told mira that well uh, if if it's about automation if it's about something about accounting then then i'm up for it so that is something that i'm very close and very relatable to me so that's why um that's why i'm here today just to share what experience i have um so technically i've been working for gosh um i started working to 2008 so that makes this year my 13 year of working and yes yeah, that's right that's right 13 i uh, it, it sounds a uh, quite short <laughs> to be honest <laughs> but at the same same time it, it feels so long also <laughs> with all the the experience that i had so and also engagement so that's why um yeah i hope i can i can give the good feedback and also uh, impart some of my knowledge uh to the students and also to those who are listening in and feel free to drop us a question uh and myself also so that we may be able to address it so over to you back to mira sure sure rising So uh, Razin, in order to kick off our discussion, I have a couple of slides that I'm going to share and we could actually progress with our discussions and share experience and your opinion on these areas. So I'm going to just uh, move my screen to a shared, uh, shared screen of my slides. Okay. All right, Razin. Are you able to see my slides, Razin? Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, guys, today we have this really, really uh, exciting um, area that we're going to be sharing and talking and discussing about. Okay, and Razin and I share the same passion. Okay, towards uh, the sustainability of the accounting profession and how it's actually moving 
to a very thriving and exciting time ahead. All right. And um, yeah, so we're going to start off uh, with the first area, Razin. Razin, I wanted to just have a look at this, Razin, and uh, the processes that, that uh, actually uh, consist or, you know, looking at the sequence of processes in a manual accounting process. So uh, in this slide, Razin, we actually have like seven steps in a manual accounting process. So Razin, what do you think of these processes? And uh, can you share your experience in how you used to work towards, uh, you know, processes like this within your work experience in those various places that you've been? Yeah, I, I would, I'm happy to. Uh, yeah, I was looking at this and uh, quite interesting. Uh, if you if you think about it, I mean, like ten years ago, when I started working. Uh, that third and fourth, I mean, the third part scanning document was basically non-existent. So we normally, what we're gonna do is just take document and then just do the key in, and then after the, after that. Only then we do the filing. It's the other way around, right? Because so in exactly, here we, exactly. we do the filing and then we reconcile. Uh, reconciliation is another thing. So, yeah, this is the S. I mean, now I think now this is basically what everybody is doing. Uh, scanning of documents is quite important. That shows mm -hmm. that you know, the for the past ten years actually there's a bit of improvement by adding the third step, uh, mm -hmm. because people realize that you know. Uh, keeping normal manual invoice or manual documents filing is very, very much troublesome because you cannot uh, find those documents back later or uh, when it, I, I think the essence of all of this is that the, the it's just show that how important our role is in terms of uh, recording those information and transaction. So, and, and as an accountant, uh, back then we I mean, it's always been highlighted. If if you compare to other departments, mm -hmm. finance has the largest uh, area for filing that normally mm -hmm. being allocated yep. because uh, we need to keep seven years of uh, filing for tax purposes. Documents. So just yeah, yep. documents. So just just imagine the the amount of space required for that. So mm -hmm. it just shows that towards the progression, then you will realize that, I mean, now finance is doing all the scanning of documents and things like that. So this is where you utilize the, the automation part also. So technically this is like, it's manual, but at the same time, you can see that we, you are embarking on, on the, um, on the digitization of the, the process itself. So, so, so in terms of my experience, yeah. uh, definitely I'm, I'm, I'm in that whole circle as it is and during my earlier days the one of the most hated things that i was uh, as a as a young executive doing my work is that scanning of documents so whenever exactly. people whenever people you're talking about what 100 invoices a day that you need to scan uh, oh, yeah. and, and you just stuck there um and i mean it's it's good if the scanner that have those uh uh where you can fit your your documents mm -hmm. uh but just imagine those document that you know sometimes you require it to it cannot be fed because um, it maybe is being printed out in different kind of set of paper and things like that so you have to scan one by one opening up the the uh, opening up the normally the mfp right the photos the big for printer machine opening yes. up closing down keep scanning and scanning and scanning and then paper start and things like that that's those are those are the manual work that and, and to be honest, for me at that point of time, I kept thinking mm -hmm. that, you know, um, why do we have to do this? Uh, exactly. It's such a waste of time for myself because just imagine that you are paying me X amount of money and then I'm just sitting here for like two hours of a day scanning yep. documents. Yes, bye -bye. You, start to, okay. you start to realize that, that you know, is this what I, I did my, you know, I worked so hard for four years and here I am scanning document after document. And yes. and you're you're wondering right that you know this is becoming so mundane and when exactly are you given the opportunity to practice and you know um, really put in some value added work? I'm yes. sure that thought did cross your mind, Ravin. Yeah, every every single day uh, until I got uh, um, normally people take the interns, right? So intern is the one doing that mm -hmm. afterwards. So exactly, yeah. <laughs> so but but the the good thing about that is that if I 
if I can share about the scanning part, people tend to not realize uh, that uh, actually you gain a lot also uh, if yes. because in uh, because those documents they have information mm -hmm. in there. So normally when I do the scanning and everything, I I keep developing a way for me to uh, to simplify uh, simplify my processes. Maybe yeah. like you using uh, scanning uh, for one vendor, or mm -hmm. and 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 I I do that process improvement on a daily basis because it's very close to to what I'm doing. So right. although I'm doing something mundane, but but I. I train myself to improve those processes on my on myself so that it improve my work so that afterward the result from that from those scannings and things like that i am able to uh, categorize my file much better or i can get the information much much um, more easier than if let's say i just do you know sometimes people don't even bother to rename their scanning document so in the end up like those um, uh, 15 digits whatever that is being set up by the system and then you, then you realize that how do I want to find those files and lead it apart? So those are the kind of um, I think thought benefits process that you have gained. Yeah, yeah. The benefits that you have also gained from from this this kind of task. Yes. So yeah, I, ultimately I think a lot of my tasks uh, back right. then so other than input. Like yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Thank you. So so this is um an in uh, a pie chart, Razin, that um. I, I actually sourced and I found that um, there's a lot of data, uh, information and, and data here about um, the reasons why, behind why the accounting profession is changing. So of course, uh, looking at this chart, I, I do see that market demands has one of the, contributes to one of the biggest percentage, okay, with the uh, changes that are going on around us. And um, secondly, I do notice that uh, ongoing digitization contributes, it's the second biggest contributor to this area. And then we have also uh, uh, other areas such as client demands, generational changes and regulations. Uh, yeah, besides ongoing digitization, yeah, regulations as well. So, so um, what is your take on this, uh, Razin? Would you like to comment on, on, on this, this, these numbers? Uh. Uh, I mean, if if they have a current practice uh, post-2020 COVID, definitely you can see there's a huge, uh, I think there's a lot of uh, changes in terms of the market mm -hmm. demands and things like that. Because the profession nowadays, I, I think people realize that um, it's very important that we need to change rapidly because one I, I, digitization is just an essence of what's going on why people embark on dig, digitization is because nowadays information need to be available almost immediately and and why real time. yes so so the thing that i mean when we talk about even 10 years ago right mm -hmm. sometimes people don't people just wait for the numbers to come at a later part yeah, you can wait for one month, two months, or three. So now, I mean, the demand for information from the stakeholder is much, much more um, important. Or, or they, they have more, they, they want more, they want it fast. So that's where the profession is changing. It's because that the availability of information itself is abundant mm -hmm. out there. So you, when, when it comes to stakeholder, when you come to top management level, you want to make decision, you cannot yes. wait whereby you have other information that is available immediately your competitor actions and things like that is coming in and waiting for numbers to come in with a with, with, you know something like oh finance haven't done they are closing yet you are talking maybe like what 15 days of closing mm. seven days we are talking about maybe 30 days and that 30 days is the it's going to make or break your businesses. And when it comes to COVID, right? I mean, when we mm -hmm. talk about nowadays, it's much more, more crucial because just imagine that in 30 days or 15 days, or maybe a week before the government is going to announce there is going to be a lockdown. Mm -hmm. If management is not able to gauge what is their current performance and what they need to be expecting, they, they need to forecast, they need to be able to execute. At the same time, they need to mobilize their workforce to make sure that everybody have a job or at least uh, can go back to uh, do a, a, a very productive working from home uh, arrangement, 
Yep. So those kind of information need to be ever be available to them very very fast. So the, those changes are the reason why I I think the accounting profession itself is is is, uh, I mean when you talk about ten years of how it moved right the for the past two years, mm -hmm. it's much more rapid than all the ten years combined all together. So now people are looking Definitely. more on, uh, and I think a lot of other companies are embarking on full digitization because yes. they have no access to those files at of uh, in the in the office anymore okay. and now and only now they they realize that oh i need bigger server space i need uh i need a good internet uh, i need a good uh equipment laptop scanning so that my people can do work so yes. so this is where i can see that this is part of it and a lot mm. of it, I mean, the, the main core of all of this happening is because of the requirement of the stakeholders. Because yes. the rapid changes of your environment from day to day itself is just, I mean, I mean I'm not surprised that maybe another 10 years from from now, mm -hmm. people, people are your stakeholder want to have a real life dashboard of how your financial situation is at the point of time, your profit for that day itself. And basically, a lot of organization is having that. They are able to take, uh, track their revenue on a daily basis because they require that. Because only then they can execute better. They can do promo, your Facebook promo, ads and things like that. It works because of all of this. If you don't have all this information available, you mm -hmm. won't be seeing all these ads because my 15 days pass of information, making it ads now is not going to help so much, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it's not relevant already after that, a certain period of time. Exactly. So yeah, so, yeah that's 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 really something to, to to think and ponder about, right? Moving forward, uh, Razin. Yes. So, Razin, I came across this by IFAC. You know, um, this was interesting. It really caught my eye. And we're talking about reimagining the future accountant. Okay, and there, there are three areas that I mentioned in this the sequence here, which is really an eye-opener. So the first one says accountants doing the same things, all right? And then it says accountants doing the same things differently, all right? And then it goes on to say accountants doing different things, all right? So, so Razin, could you share some examples, Razin, about uh, what what do you think uh, is this in the sequence of stages? What sort of areas are we looking at? What sort of processes or what sort of examples that you would like to or perceptions perhaps that you would like to share with us uh, it's um yeah i i mean if everybody asks you right i mean accountants mm -hmm. have according to people have the most boring job in the world according to some <laughs> but but i i disagree on that basis yeah. because i've been an accountant for quite a while so i don't find the job boring itself uh and to be honest, a lot of the same things that I'm doing right now. Uh, the the thing is, uh, you the is it goes it goes to to how you do your your processes itself. So processes are, are meant to be uh, be followed. Uh, yeah. It was designed that way, and then you keep doing the same things over and over again. Uh, for example, recording an AP invoice, right? From receiving your invoice from supplier, do the three-way matching, record in the system, and then do the making the payments and things like that. So doing the same thing all over again every single day for your 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 career life. Then when I'm, I'm putting very simple simple things now. So when moving about doing same things differently, I mean that's where it comes where an accountant need to figure out what i'm doing right now the amount of time i'm spending to it how can i improve these processes in terms of recording my invoices in terms of um, uh, collecting all the invoices to make sure that um, all it all of it is accounted for from vendors and things like that how do i accept because certain sops or processes are being made so rigidly for example they don't accept soft copies they don't they, for all all sort of reasons right so yes. as an accountant, when you are doing all this kind of thing, you need to think differently on how to improve those processes. Exactly. So, because like, like I mentioned, I don't like to spend two hours of doing the same thing every single day of my life for the next five years because I felt that, well, I, I, I would rather do other things. I, I would rather do more analysis. 
and, and that's yeah. where I th- that's where you know come to the third thing doing different things all together but uh, yes. this kind of this is where I think the future accountants need to to develop themselves to 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 put themselves in this kind of mentality because the problem is that if you start in that first sequence you're going to mm-hmm. start there for the next 10 years the the thing about doing the same things differently that is just a small step for you to do the other different things is expanding your role so if you don't start with starting to the thought process of what do i need to do the improvement on myself on my processes that's where the problem comes later because you are, you are not training yourself for that and then when you're not training yourself for that then how do you expect you to do other different things because you can't because you are stuck there you keep doing the same thing for the past two years and then you are not contributing anything to this process improvement so i uh, i mean this is the future accountants they need to become jack of all trades but at the same time they they need to be specialized in their own field which is accounting and finance they need to be able to give the comfort to the to to the management to to say mm-hmm. that i know what i'm doing but at the yeah. same time also i'm not doing something that um uh, that that is not beneficial to the company i'm adding more value i'm reducing the number of uh, lead time i can provide you information now this much faster than we are having three you three years ago or five years ago so that's is something that you need to bring the value to your organization as a as an accountant yeah yeah that very well said Razi. very well said so um i came across this by accenture uh in 2020 Razin, and um there's some perceptions here by cfos okay that uh that the 76% of them actually stated that uh, automation will allow their teams to provide more and better insight to the rest of the business while at the same time liberating them. Okay, and then 78% of CFOs actually believe that digitalization will facilitate a rise in self-service reporting and this will eliminate the need for traditional finance stewardship. Yeah? And 84%, okay, echoing what you actually mentioned earlier, um, Razin is uh, expecting to be providing real-time or near real-time insight, Razin. So, so this data really reflects and, and echoes exactly what you were saying earlier. So it's really amazing where things are moving. So your take on this, Razin? Yeah, uh, this, I, I, I think not only CFOs are looking at it. I mean, the whole spectrum of the C-suite, the CEOs and leaders are looking at this way. Uh, like, because like I said, now this information is just going to be available almost immediately. And every single move that the market move, the government, your competitors, it it determines how you're going to react, right? And especially like nowadays you have COVID, it's more than never that you need to act fast. Because if, the moment that you fail to act within the spirit of time, the the impact you don't feel it in almost immediately you but it it will become such a cancerous kind of problem that yeah. is going to make your company suffer for the rest of the months come so that's yeah. where i think digitization is very important where where nowadays um it allows you to make good decision uh, or 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 at the same time it makes you have a little bit sense of control of mm-hmm. something that you are not able to control. Uh, it's a bit paradoxical, right? When you put it that way. But when you talk about something about COVID, you can't control the number of cases every single day or when the government decide to do a lockdown. But at least because you have all the data sets available to you, you have all the information, at least you can control that situation within your own environment. And that yes. is really important for management. The moment the management lose control of their own businesses, that's where the business doesn't work anymore so that that's that right. i think that's the that's the core part of it so that's yeah. that's where it is right now uh and and hopefully that you know people want to go beyond this they they, they want to do almost like blockchain and and things like um uh from a to z kind of, uh of digitization all the way from yes. having your uh exactly purchase right. order Yes. So, and you know the, the really good thing uh, here, Razin, is that um, 
um, APU, we have actually, um, you know, addressed uh, technological advancements in our teaching area. Okay, and um, it, whether you mentioned now blockchain and some of the other areas that I'm going to mention after this, we really uh, have taken a lot of measures and steps to inculcate this uh, within our students, uh, within the syllabus and, you know, passing it down to the students via their modules. So I think it's a really good uh move that we have taken towards uh, building in the changes towards this profession and coming up with the right skills in terms of technology that students need in order to move into the working environment. So uh, moving on. So this is um, this is the view on technology, uh, Razin. So very, very... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can hear you laughing there, Razin. So this technology um, has stepped in so much and it has inserted itself into uh, our um, you know our lives today and especially in the lives of an accountant so Razin how do you view technology and how do you view technology advancements in accounting uh, yeah very interesting I, I, I mean uh, I would to, for, to be honest my generation I mean uh we are uh, we grew up in a in the environment full of technological advancement and it is something that is very very easy for us to adapt uh and very very uh i i think for for our for me personally i find that technology is not as scary as uh, this picture mm -hmm. uh, but from what i I, I think there's need to to have this idea that what technology is all about because certain people have this understanding that technology is about mm, mm, uh, one push of a button kind of solution yeah uh, and without realizing that you know whatever that is happening in terms of uh, if those who are no have a bit of knowledge about computer and coding every single code that you do there's a bit of logic to that you need to yeah. build upon a, a, a logic so and to, to be honest once one push of a button kind of solution is not really logical if everybody can do that then i would say that is a you know sound making it sound logical also is a bit illogical it's a bit it's a, it's a very difficult process because you're talking about multiple processes multiple departments multiple function being done or being uh, being uh, integrated into one uh, form of system and sometimes you you cannot there is no such thing as a perfect system in this world mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays i think a lot of things is happening we are talking about ai we are talking about machine learning i i mean the computer is getting smarter and smarter processors are yeah. getting bigger and bigger uh, mm -hmm. at the same time it's getting smaller also at the same time in terms of their yeah. chip size but that's where it all comes back to how technology is developing. So as yeah. an accountant, you don't have to be scared of technology. What you need to know is that you need to understand that what technology is available to you, what yeah. technology that you can use or utilize for your own purposes. At the same time, you need to always think or about potential new technology that can assist your business or processes. Yeah. So this is where that kind of um, idea need to come from an accountant. Because the thing is, people always left this whole idea about technology to this specific IT department. Yeah. Whereby you fail to realize that the user is yourself. And you, if you are not able to think about the correct or the right technology that you require as a user, you, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's not good or it's not really uh, efficient to delegate it to somebody who doesn't really understand your processes so this exactly. is where I, I think for an accountant or for for the students here or the leaders out there they need to figure out what is the right technology that i need to have in my organization yeah and and for me to improve my process whereby i want to Im improve in terms of my own value of the company. I don't want my people to spend half a day 
just doing such a mundane work because I'm paying them for yes. them to give value to my company. But if they spend half a day uh, doing a very manual work, then what? Uh, and I, I, what, what, what is there? It's all about right. How, how am I going to get X amount of uh, productivity from there? Yeah. So this is where this, this is where the the challenge for accountant need to be right now. You need to be adaptable. You need to accept technology is there, but at the same time, you need to know the right technology. So you need to expose yourself, you need to keep yourself updated, you need to know how to apply it. There's some very good points uh, I picked up from what you said, Vazin, utilizing it the right way and actually um, using it to, to release yourself from some of the redundant or mundane work that you carry out, which probably will not add that much value to what you're doing as an accountant and give you more time to spend on more strategic areas. Yeah. So, so having a look at this, uh, Razin, it says uh, technology has a long history, right, in the accounting profession. It's not new for us, and we have been using it all along. We started with computers. We, we, we started, uh, you know, from the time that we started the use of a backers back, you know, by the Mesopo Mesopotamians, as I mentioned here right long way back and right up to where we are today using ai and machine learning we have actually met every and advancement in technology that has been present towards us and we have been using and utilizing them to enhance the way that we carry out our day-to-day -day operations what do you think of that Razin? yeah uh, i mean this is part of our evolution itself uh, but yeah interesting that I, I think this is where, you know, when we talk about technology, right, taking a very simple thing, um, recording of transaction, probably we talk about 30 years ago during my mom's uh, and pop's time, they are yeah. using those big ledger books that like... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> you have two columns and you need to make sure that yeah. at the end of the day, you need, yep. to, you need to tie both sides. Exactly. At the same time, in order for, you know, the calculators back there, in, in order to do your, your so-called um, validation of those numbers, mm -hmm. uh, whether you do the correct casting, you have those calculators that have come up with a receipt kind of thing, that oh, yeah. have a roll of paper, and then you need to stick that to those, uh, to those ledger, ledger book. Mm -hmm. And now on this, what basically we, we are doing, we're just using Excel, right? Some yes. column uh row r1 to uh r24 and something like that and, and you get that almost immediately and this is where it just show that accountant that the thing is like i said the need for us to meet all this technology yeah. is something that is required of us it's not even a choice anymore yeah. as an accountant you need to use this you need to understand what technology is available to you and how to use it machine learning it sounds so complicated right to this uh, the ai and machine learning but uh, again the machine learning is about setting up uh, I, I give a very simple thing about machine learning yeah um digitization or or recording of invoices whereby you just scan those invoices in yeah and the scanner the, the software will pick up the vendor name amount invoice number and so and such mm -hmm. so that is machine learning yeah when, when, when we talk about machine learning we, we we always think about oh it's so complicated and everything no the machine learn by itself because you set this, the parameters you set yes. the condition and then it starts learning the number of invoices that you feed to it every single day the software keep improving and improving with the the with the the uh towards the time you realize that you you are able to to basically uh, do all these processes that normally take maybe one week in mm -hmm. one day so just imagine that amount of time being safe so it's a lot of time it's a lot of time right so it's, it's basically technology today is liberating us, right? Uh, accountants to perform higher value work. Okay. And um, 
it really could not have come at a better time, Razin, because the workload of an accountant is always mounting. And, you know, to have a, a solution like this is a real relief, right? Don't you think? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, very, very good. Uh, I, I mean, it's always you you remember those days where you have to go back late night because yes. of closing. Yeah. <laughs> we hardly yeah. see the sun, right? You leave your, yeah. home, your home before the sunrise and then you get back only after sunset. So, yeah. You know, you lose out a lot of time in and and you know it's amazing now that you know um, accountants can actually aim towards having a really good work life balance. And yes. um, I really think it's you know I wish I was studying accounting right now, Razin. Honestly, I wish like I was like gonna do modules which are technology related. I wish I was I had yeah. this opportunity. I just feel like you know doing it all over again. It's yeah. just so exciting to be a student right now. Studying, um, you know, uh, doing something so important for your organization, you're going to be a really big contributor to your organization as an accountant, yes. right? And I feel we just, it's something that we need to adopt and, you know, we adopted to the computer, the rise of the internet and, you know, using a smartphone, you can actually approve transactions on your phone right now yes. uh, as an authorized, uh, like using software like Zero, yeah? And I think... Um, it's really amazing uh, the way things are, are moving. So, um, yeah, these are some of the uh, really good salary scales that, that are there um, for accounting rules. And, you know, it's it's moving on an upward trend, Razin, right? And I think um, it's, it's, you know, um, just getting better uh, as you move up the ranks. And it seems that, you know, you have a really good option of moving up the ranks eventually in your organization with the not the right knowledge and expertise that you have. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going to bring you to the uh, seven portions that uh, we need to have, right, Razin, in the accounting uh, area, the accounting accountant of tomorrow. And this was actually presented by ACCA, Razin, on the experience, intelligence, creative, and emotional intelligence and vision. And I'm really happy to see that digital has actually taken one of the roles in the technical competencies that an accountant will be having in the future. So I just want to take you to this part, Razin, uh, on the importance of uh, what needs to be there in an accounting graduate. What sort of skills, Razin? And some of it has been mentioned here. Yeah, um, yeah it, the thing about us, uh, I mean, uh, as an employer also uh, i think i found that the uh, the knowledge in terms of how you want to use the data correctly is very important uh this is where i find it's a bit challenging uh, and it's a i find it is very very weird for young students or young uh, professional joining the uh the industry nowadays some of them find difficulty on uh on not to say manipulating that is basically working with data whereby day to day you guys are basically exposed to data from day and night uh facebook uh insta twitter and things like that those are data That's right. but when when it, when we put it on another form whereby it's just your excel sheet you you find it so difficult for you to connect a and b those kind of thing and sometimes there, there is always this one notion that i always tell them that uh Oh, I can't do this, uh, or I can't do that. And I, I, when I ask, did you Google that? And that's where they're like, oh, I need to Google. And you, you are surprised because they are in Google every single day, but they are not Googling the work. They are Googling, yeah. I don't know, who's the, who's the, the next drama that they need to watch in Netflix or something <laughs> like that. But that's, the, <laughs> but that's that. That's the thing. I mean, Google is the best tool for as young professional nowadays i mean if i have those kind of answer from a 50 year old account executive i might understand them but when a 20 year old come to me and say that oh i cannot find the correct formula to do this excel sheet and i'm like did you google and then they say what to google i just say that google how to uh, mix text and number and then in excel and it will come up with you know use concatenate and that's those kind of things 
So the thing is sometimes the young yeah. they are not able to link from one another because they are they they always felt that work is work. Whereby I uh, oh how do I utilize technology in my hand to improve my work? Oh I need to wait for the company to give me the correct te- technology, the correct way of the technology to be used or the correct system mm-hmm. that this is the only thing that I can use as an employee. It doesn't work that way anymore. Yeah. Nowadays, the resource is abundant out there. You cannot expect mm-hmm. company to come and feed you for every single thing. So this is where I think that uh, the, the graduate need to, I mean, the accounting graduates need to, to start changing their mindset. And data is a lot of the, out there. And you will need more data to come up with a better analysis. And, and, but it, it sounds so complicated, right? So. But let me share. I just uh, told my my uh, my trainee the other day, do something that is relatable to your work. I said, uh, and and you need to train yourself when you start working. You need to train yourself with something that um, that is very very close to you. When you are assigned, maybe to do um, invoice payment, right. for example. Uh, mm-hmm. other than keying into the system and everything, maybe you need to have a, your own database on uh, uh, on how many invoices you do a day or something like that. And Monitor. this should, yeah, yes. Uh, and this will train yourself. It will allow you to 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 create a simple pivot or things like that. It will allow you to play around. But don't spend, yeah, mm-hmm. don't, don't, don't spend like half a day to do this kind of thing. People always, and people, your, your bosses did not pay you to do this thing. It's actually on your own benefit so yeah. you need to find a way to do this very quickly maybe like 10 minutes yeah. of the day and and that's it uh yeah. so I, I think that yeah. this is yeah this is where uh, students uh, need to have nowadays yeah yeah uh, so i guess um uh, razin to, to sum that up i believe that you know they need to have uh, they have to look at opportunities on how to actually you know um, ease their work and you know, by using uh, analytical tools, they probably have to think um, more, they have to think more critically, yeah, and yes. um, also understand and, you know, interpret the data that has been provided to them, yeah. So I think this is a really, really important skill that uh, needs to be inculcated in a student, an accounting graduate of tomorrow, yeah. And um, with that, uh, Razin, I think uh, we can move on to uh, the Q&A session, Razin, with... Uh, with Loom, if, if that's okay with you, and then we can do a, a sum up after that, yeah? All right, hi, thank you. Thank you for your sharing. Well, it's very really insightful information. All right, so everyone, now is our q and session. Um, feel free to drop in your questions at our comment area. Well, before that, actually, I actually always facing students asking me, when we keep on seeing that technology have been involving in accounting job in accounting role so does it mean that accountant uh, career opportunity will be lesser so am i not able to get a job in the future because everyone have been saying that oh technology the system the software everything will be taken over so maybe a company only need uh, two or three accountants will do so what's your opinion on that uh so that oh, do, it, do, it. yeah i mean like that, that's a that's a sharp observation also by them but the thing is about technology is that it requires a person behind there to use that technology to use that data to use that information this is where the evolve uh, evolution of accountant role need to be from there and you need to bring that value in terms of interpretation in terms of analysis this is where the role from those where you are just a record keeper you just do a very menial clerical work of data entry, it evolves into something that is much more value added to the organization. You do analytics, you are basically trying to tell your bosses or your company that you know our revenue X month is affected because of five branches are closed down because they have COVID cases from there. Rather than you know just doing a data entry of the revenue and just presenting to them then say, oh, there's a drop in revenue. Why? I don't know. I just do a data entry. This is where the role is evolving. 
and, and a lot of technological advancement gives us in, in terms of machine learning, in terms of AI, it gives you opportunity to get the data faster for you to analyze. And when you are able to analyze it faster, then you are able to give your management more uh, opportunity for them to make a better decision. So this is where the role is shifting now, rather than, you know, the, the thing is people tend to, if, if they sum up to that, they tend to think about the menial clerical work. No one wants to do a clerical work anymore. We're not talking about 20, 30 years ago. We are talking about now. This is where analytics come into picture. And how do you want to present the analysis is another challenges altogether. Nowadays, it's all about imaginary. It's all about picture, pictorial information need to be available. Sometimes the management doesn't want to see numbers anymore. They just want to see a pie chart. They just want to see a graph, a very nice looking uh, presentation. And how do you want to do this uh, presentation very fast? This is where the challenges come in in terms of the accountants so we are when we're talking about limiting those amount maybe rather than 10 clerks we don't need 10 clerks anymore we are not looking for account clerks anymore we are looking for account and we are looking for a data analyst we are looking about account executive senior account executive we are looking at higher roles nowadays so to better equip the students this is where you need to to sit down and think about your role in the future you it's not that there's no more job available out there. It's just that the job is changing. You are not required to do those anymore. You are required other things. So you need to equip with that right knowledge for you to do those, to do other, those other things that is very important nowadays. Being able to use the data, being able to come up with analysis. So this is where the challenge uh, would be. Okay, yeah. Well, it's, it's very correct. It doesn't mean that technology taking over, you doesn't have the job for accountant. Definitely, we still need accountant for it. It's just that all the technology have she have been make your job more effective, efficient and actually more effective, right? Yes. Yeah. So we, we have one uh, audience here, uh, Mr. Nafis, all right? So technology has improved the accounting process, but at the same time, industry is experiencing more fraud. Does automation have a role to play in this? To go. Oh, it's an interesting question. Um, well, the whole idea of actually automation at the same time, uh, when, when you are designing a system, right, you always think about controls, putting in the correct internal, uh, pro internal controls in there to make sure that fraud doesn't happen. But interestingly is that sometimes people find a way uh, to, because, because people want to do fraud, People who want to cheat and steal, they always figure out how to do it. Uh, to be honest, nowadays with automation and with, with, uh, with digitization, it should be more difficult because the trail is there rather than when you talk about maybe 30 years ago when you have a ledger book, right? If you just uh, wipe out using a correctional pen or something, who knows who did that rather than now. Now you can do a log entry you know who changed the numbers. So technically fraud should be manageable. Pe the thing is people want, people do that because they find a loophole in the system. So that's very important when you do a system design, the internal control need to be embedded into that. That's why, because I myself invo involved in a number of ERP migration, ERP uh, uh, implementation. So it's always put uh, good that we have a discussion about how from process A to B, how the control works, who is allowed to do data entry, who allowed to do a posting. You cannot have the same person who do the data entry, do the posting, uh, who, do, who do the validation, does the system able to do their own auto validation. Those kind of thought process need to be in that kind of uh, setting up of the system. So fraud happens, like I said, because the system was not designed properly. And this is where the input of a user, for example, as a finance user, you need to tell the IT, those system uh, developer, what you need. The problem is that when you are not able to tell them what you need, the control that is in there, you cannot expect them to figure out for you because they are not in that uh, profession. They are not in the process. They don't know what's the logical part, why the person who do the data entry cannot do the posting for them. 
It's just a system. Just the key in and then you post. It saves time. But it doesn't work that way. In terms of accountant, we put that processes because we don't want people to manipulate, to do manipulation, to do a fraudulent entry. So we still need to be there to guide the system. The, 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 the moment fraud happened because of failure in system design, it needs to go back to who is the process owner? Who is the one who should be accountable for that system? And definitely it should go back to, to the finance department, to the, the user itself. Uh, even when you talk about a finance system, right? ERP, the accounting system. So the role of the CFO, FC and everything, they need to take ownership of that system. The failure to do so, and when this happens, they cannot point it back to, ah, IT is the one who do the setting up. It doesn't work that way because IT wouldn't be able to, to know all of this is happening. So this is where I, 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 I think that, to, to be honest, um, it's not that I, I disagree. Technically, technology would allow a better control whereby you should not have fraud anymore. Almost zero, I would say, because you are able to trail it back to who is the maker. And because the thing, uh, the, thing the, the most important thing is that this is where the role of accountant or CFO or the leader for this need to come. They need to, they need to understand what technology is available to them and what control that they need to embed in that uh, technology. All right. Thank you. All right. So maybe the next questions. All right. So how important is for an accountant to learn programming skill? Uh, a good question. <laughs> to, to be honest, uh, I myself, uh, I, 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 it's not that I know programming, but I know a bit of the programming language and it, because it was required to me. Uh, based on my experience, what happened when I was tasked to do, uh, to set up a framework of a new company. So IT just pass you a sandbox of system because we just acquired that company and then they're like, okay, uh, this is the only system that is available. Uh, our other companies are using it. So yeah, you please help to do the implementation. And I have to figure out how to link from one processes to another, how to link from sales to receivables to uh, all the way until how you come up with that report. So, and we are talking about a Unix based system. Those uh, that if people are familiar with it, uh, almost you need to use F1, F, all the, all the keyboard. There's no such thing as using mouse for that system. <laughs> it's all like, <laughs> <laughs> you you need to it's very manual uh, i mean not to say manual but it's very old school kind of system uh but that's that that's the thing it's just show that sometimes you are being thrown out of nowhere and that is what the job requirement is all about so it's good to have that kind of uh uh programming uh skills and there's abundant of uh uh, of uh, literature out there, uh, videos, YouTube, and things like that. Even myself, sometimes I go and watch. Uh, I, I, I try to understand about Python, uh, the, uh, SQL, and things like that. Because uh, at least when I'm part of the design team for system and things like that, I'm able to understand what they are talking about. When they talk about uh, the, the back end part of designing the system, they're talking about the codes and everything. At least they know, oh, this guy, although he's a finance guy, he knows, he knows what we're talking about. At least I'm not going to frustrate my stakeholder for them because they know they, they can talk to me about limitation. Because like I said, if user fail to understand what they want, they want everything under the sun. They want, they, they want the whole sky of the system. Like I say one push of a button and you throw that to IT and your system de developer, they're just going to say you are crazy we can't do this so this is where the the important comes in and uh, and i i think that it i mean i'm not sure if apu have this part of uh, as part of their program in terms of accountancy that will be good addition to for the students you know as a student yourself i think as a as a person who embark on this role you need to know that the role the, the digital line between a computer programmer and basically you are not to become a programmer at least you are it's like learning language to go to another country right it's better that you know how to say thank you where to go how much is it for example to japan if you want to to ask how much in japanese 
at least you know how much is it in Japanese. Would it help you? It's similar how this apply to your to your task right now. At least if you know a bit about the programming language, at least you can talk to your developer, you can talk to the vendor, you can talk to your IT and say that, hey, I think this logic is not really correct. That's why you have this kind of problem. Or when we, when we talk about system design, oh, I understand when you say you cannot do this because the coding is as such. Okay, I understand. Okay, then how do we want to make this? Because certain things you cannot you cannot uh, you cannot help it because the control need to be there so you need to work together and this is where you know language connect each other right so the language of a programmer is basically all the coding so this is where you you need to have that kind of knowledge also so, all right okay yeah uh, our appeal accounting degree actually have been embedded some fintech element inside as well so mira you want to add in on our program itself so how how our program actually have been meeting the demand in the futures and do we have the technology element in our program hi mira yeah yes hello uh, yes so to to um to sum up i would really 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 like to thank Razin, uh, for such an insightful uh, presentation. And it was an eye opener, Razin, uh, to all of us. And you know, we're looking forward to the accounting graduates of tomorrow with all the new skills that they're going to be coming out with. And I'm sure they're going to make a real contribution to the profession and to the industry at large. So thank you very much to um, Razin. I really appreciate your time. And over to Lung. Uh, all right, um, because we're running short of time, so so maybe both of you maybe actually can can give some suggestions to our future student now, because what actually what's the knowledge actually they need to equip in order for them to become a successful accountant in the future. Hi, uh, Lung, can you just repeat that again? I think I lost you. All right, I mean. I mean, maybe you can give some suggestion to our student. So what kind of knowledge or technique they yeah. should to equip themselves in order to become a accountant in the future? Yes, thank you, Long. So just to echo on what Razin has mentioned, and I really think that, uh, you know, the skills that are required are definitely technology skills, which should be embedded, analytical skills, critical thinking, your emotional intelligence, and all of this should definitely contribute within your, your 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 teaching and learning experience. And I'm glad and happy to say that this is exactly what we are providing at APU. And please do find out more about our programs from our marketing team. Do approach us. And these are exactly the skills that are needed for tomorrow to provide and contribute to the organization's success. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, all right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Razin and also Ms. Mira. All right. Yep. Our APU accounting degree actually do equip with a fintech element, the technology element inside that, so that you actually can equip every one of you to actually meet up the demand in the industry later on. All right. So stay tuned to follow our Facebook page for more updates. Upcoming, we actually have more, uh, another session actually talking about cybersecurity. For those who are interested in it, you will not want to miss it on this session. All right, thank you again, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.